Good afternoon. This, <laughs> thank you, Jane. <laughs> this hearing is called to order. This is the public hearing of the City Council Committee on Public Health and Human Services. And the purpose of this public hearing is to hear testimony on Bill Number 180695. I want to recognize the presence of a quorum of committee members. And the members in attendance are Councilman Al Toggenberger, <laughs> Councilman Bill Greenlee, and Councilwoman Helen Gim. And if we can now have the clerk read the title of Bill Number 180695. Bill number 180695, amending Title IX, Regulation of Businesses, Trades, and Professions of the Philadelphia Code, to add a new section 9-637 entitled Opioid Antidote Availability to require pharmacies to stock opioid antidotes and display signs giving notice of opioid antidote availability to customers, all under certain terms and conditions. Thank you. And does any member of the panel have an opening a remark? Okay, uh, and if we can have the um, clerk now call the first witness to testify, and I believe the only. Dr. Thomas Farley, Health Commissioner, City of Philadelphia. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Please state your name for the record and begin your testimony. Uh, good afternoon, Chairwoman Bass and members of the Public Health and Human Services Committee. I'm Dr. Thomas Farley, Health Commissioner for Philadelphia. Thank you for allowing me to testify on Bill Number 180695, which was sponsored by Councilman Heenan. This bill would require that retail pharmacies stock naloxone nasal spray so that this life-saving treatment is more widely available. We are supportive of this bill as one of many steps needed to address the opioid crisis in Philadelphia. As I'm sure you know, in 2017, over 1,200 people in Philadelphia died of drug overdose, and opioids were involved in nearly 90% of those deaths. Naloxone, which is sold under the trade name Narcan, is a medication that can successfully reverse an opioid overdose and save a person's life. It takes no special expertise or training to save a life with naloxone. Anyone can do it. One of the many actions recommended by the mayor's task force to combat the opioid epidemic was to make greater use of this medication to prevent fatal drug overdoses. City agencies are doing that. Philadelphia's emergency medical services teams use naloxone extensively and Philadelphia police officers carry it and reverse many overdoses. And my department is working with the Department of Behavioral Health and Intellectual Disability Services to make naloxone more available to the friends and family members of drug users and to encourage those people to carry it and use it. Since June of 2017, we have distributed 57,000 doses of naloxone to people in a position to treat drug overdose. We have also run ads on billboards and through social media showing people exactly how to use naloxone to save lives. In 2015, Pennsylvania Physician General Dr. Rachel Levine signed a standing order that allows anyone to purchase naloxone from a pharmacy without a prescription. Unfortunately, not all pharmacies in Philadelphia are stocking the medication. In the fall of 2016, researchers from the University of Pennsylvania found that only 40% of pharmacies it contacted had naloxone in stock. Zip code 19134, an area with the greatest overdose threat, had the lowest percentage of pharmacies with naloxone in stock. Since then, the number of pharmacies stocking naloxone appears to have increased. However, earlier this year, our department called over 200 pharmacies and found that nearly 25% of them still did not stock the medication. There are over 400 pharmacies in Philadelphia, meaning that more than 100 do not have naloxone in stock. And we know that city residents are having difficulty obtaining naloxone because community members continue to contact our office after not being able to get it from their pharmacy. Bill number 180695 would require that retail pharmacies keep two kits of naloxone in stock. It would also require that pharmacies to post a sign indicating that naloxone is available for purchase. We do not think the stocking requirement places much burden on pharmacies, especially since three quarters of pharmacies are already in compliance. At the same time, we believe that ensuring that every pharmacy in Philadelphia has this medication available will encourage more people to purchase and use naloxone and that has the potential to save lives that we are currently losing to drug overdose. Thank you for the opportunity to testify. I'm happy to answer any of your questions. Thank you, uh, Commissioner. Um, thank you for this information and uh, the idea that 25% of uh, the pharmacies here in Philadelphia do not currently stock this medication is um, disturbing. You would have think uh, in a city that's known for its eds and meds, so to speak, that we would have uh, a much broader uh, level of coverage, especially in the areas where it was needed in the 19134 um, uh, zip code. And so um, I'm, I'm, I am glad to see that that is um, 
uh, something that the health department is, um, you know, pushing, that this is something that we can actually uh, get pharmacies to do. Um, one of the questions or concerns I have is regarding, you know, um, the uh, attack or the uh, interest uh, or the, um, let me find the, the correct word here because I don't want to uh, mess up, but how do we make sure that we get the same level of comprehensive coverage on some of the other uh, uh, substance abuse issues that we uh, are facing here in the city, such as, you know, alcohol abuse and um, um, there's always, you know, for a long time in many communities, uh, the crack cocaine epidemic and things of that nature. Uh, are, do you have any ideas or suggestions on things that we can do to um, effectively find ways to uh, draw attention or treatment to those as well? Because I think that this is going to make a big difference. And if we can make a big difference in all communities where there are substance abuse issues, uh, it could really go a long way in helping our city. Yeah, yeah, thank you. So um, opioids... Uh, are, uh, there are many different addictive drugs. Opioids are unique in that they can cause very frequently fatal drug overdose, um, and that's a bad side of them. One positive side, though, is that there is this drug naloxone, which is this incredible antidote that mm -hmm. works in a matter of seconds. Uh, there isn't any equivalent for cocaine. Um, most people, it's, it's rare to overdose from cocaine. It sometimes happens that people have an unusual reaction and die suddenly, but there's no specific antidote okay. for that. So there's no equivalent other drug that we would want to require pharmacies okay. to carry mm -hmm. for cocaine or, or other addictive drugs. So for the other addictive drugs, uh, our approach has to boil down to just simply making all forms of drug treatment more, more widely available and encouraging more people to take advantage of that. Uh, you know, our department is not the one that provides drug treatment in the city. That's the Department of Behavioral Health and Intellectual Disability Services. But I know that they're working hard to try to increase the accessibility of drug treatment. Um, and, and I'm hoping, hopeful in the wake of the opioid crisis that that really benefits people regardless of whatever drug that they're addicted to. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, well, we certainly want to, you know, again, be, um, you know, I, I, I'm appreciative of the work that you all have done on this, and I certainly do understand that. Um, this has a reaction that other substances do not have, you know, that sort of uh, threat of immediate um, right. overdose that the other um, uh, substances do not have. Um, but we want to make sure that we can try to draw attention to the overall problem because one of the things that I'm, I'm sure that you know is that, you know, you may start out on one drug or one other yeah. substance and gradually work your way into uh, an opioid or a, a heroin situation. So if we can kind of catch people before they get to that point, that would be a great thing. Yeah, well, many uh, people who are addicted to drugs use many different drugs. They're not just uh, yes. using one yes, versus yes. the other. Uh, and so, you know, naloxone to deal with drug overdose is de dealing with just one little piece of the problem. It's, it's a little stopgap measure to try to keep people alive long enough to get them into treatment. Yes. It doesn't address all the many other things we need to do, and mm -hmm. we do need to work on all those other uh, things to make, make it so hard to less likely for people to become addicted in the first place and make it easier for them to get treatment if they do become addicted. Well, it would be a great thing if we can stop the number of overdose you know, right. deaths here in the city and that we can get folks um, to the hospital and then to treatment um, so. so that we can reverse some of the numbers that we're seeing. So yeah. thank you very much. I want yeah. to acknowledge Councilman Blondo Reynolds-Brown has joined us and also Councilman Derek Green. Councilman Toggenberger had a comment. I do. Well, actually, a, 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 a question. And, well, and a comment as well. Uh, Dr. Farley, thank you very much for your efforts in ridding the Philadelphia of this uh, awful epidemic. It's no question about it. A little bit about, uh, or a little bit, uh, a question on uh, naloxone. Is that a prescription drug? It is still a prescription drug. It has not been uh, changed by the FDA to being an over-the-counter drug. However, the Pennsylvania Physician General has written a standing order, so anybody can purchase it without a prescription. They need to go to the pharmacy counter within the pharmacy and say, I want to purchase naloxone, and the pharmacist can dispense it. Sure. Okay. That, make, uh, that makes sense to me. The other question I have, is there any effect from uh, naloxone if you, you just want to take right. it for taking sake? I mean... Uh, no, it's a good question. No, it's completely safe. So if you have someone who hasn't been taking opioids and they were to get a nasal spray of naloxone, it would have no effect whatsoever. Or how about for someone that just says, oh, well, this sounds pretty neat, maybe I'll take this. Yeah, no okay. effect whatsoever. Oh, yeah. and, and naloxone in some other countries of the world is sold over the counter. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, that's, that's all very, very good to know. Doctor, thank you very much. Madam okay. Chair, thank you. Thank you. Um, 
And one other quick question. What's the cost, uh, what's the average cost of um, the treatment at, um, at pharmacies here so, in Philadelphia? So if I just walked in without a prescription. Right. You know, they, they're gonna uh, charge different amounts and it, uh, most health plans are gonna pay for it with, uh, with a copay. A copay could be anywhere from $0 to maybe $25 or $50. So we obviously prefer to have very little copay. Uh, the actual retail price for right. a kit, which has two doses in it, uh, I believe is $150 uh, typically. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's a lot of money for most people to pay, but thankfully most uh, health plans are gonna pay for that. Now Medicaid, um, if I'm not mistaken, covers it with no pay, no copay. Okay, okay. Uh, Councilman Brown. Yes. Good afternoon, Commissioner. Good afternoon. Uh, as a, a general, uh, I have a general question, given this crisis that is facing us locally and nationally. What grade would you give Philadelphia right now around our handling of the opioid crisis as it relates to uh, item one, collaboration with the, uh, the well, you can't say the community because there's so many communities are being impacted. So, so generally, what grade would you give us compared to how well other municipalities are doing with regards to this crisis? Why I ask is I was invited to a forum that was held at the Kimmel Center, at the Kimmel Center, um, um, led by Independence Blue Cross Foundation, Lorena Marshall Blake, whereby folks from across the spectrum came to the Kimmel Center to hear um, all the aspects about this crisis, including those who have, who are in recovery and those who are seeking recovery. So they actually had uh, individuals on stage who were giving their testimony. And so for me, while we read about it, and I had my staff actually do a full day retreat um, in the Kensington area underneath that bridge this past uh, June, so that we could see it up close and personal, we were um, uh, escorted by the local police captain there. Um, it, it, uh, it's heartrending when you see how the scale of this problem. Yeah. So given the scale of it and the fact that even the federal government is trying to figure out how to handle it, what grade would you give us our city right now stacked against other situated municipalities? Yeah, well, so you're right, this is a national crisis. Um, upwards of 70,000 people dying of drug overdose uh, in a single year in the United mm -hmm. States as a whole. Those numbers continue to rise. Uh, so I don't know that there's any city in the United States that has gotten ahead of this problem and say that they have solved this problem. Um, I don't know in detail what other cities are doing. I'm sure that there are other cities that are ahead of us in some ways and there are other places where we're ahead of other cities. But it's clear that our efforts um, as yet are not big enough to really turn this problem around. We have the numbers of people who are becoming addicted and are addicted, I think continues to rise. I think that is mainly due to the uh, over-prescribing of mm -hmm. prescription painkillers, secondarily due to the availability of fentanyl, which is now very cheap and easy to get on the street. Uh, so that, the number of people who are dependent is on the rise, and, and even if a small fraction of them die of drug overdose, that's a lot of people. So um, I'm not sure I can grade us other than to say that we are definitely not ahead of this problem. There's a lot more work we need to do. Okay. I will give us good marks for at least working together across multiple agencies and at least trying to grapple with the problem. I think that the, the current emphasis on creating an emergency declaration to get all the agencies uh, in the same room together is a, one additional step to really help that cooperation work. Is DHS at that table? Uh, they are. I don't know all the details of what committees they sit on, but they are. Okay. All right, then. Thank you for, for, for an honest uh, um, view of how, how huge it is and how we're not yet in front of it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Talkenbarker. One last question. I think then you've answered everything to my satisfaction. But most people would go into a pharmacy to get naloxone. Would, they would be trying to help someone. Is that correct? Yes. Because a person that really is overdosing would rare be able to do right. it. Yeah, the, the typical situation would be, say, a family member of someone who knows his family member is addicted and either injecting heroin or taking pills every day and is worried that they may die of a drug overdose. So they want to have that at hand should that happen. Correct. Or they could, maybe they're at home and you could see something's going wrong and they run out to the, the closest pharmacy. Yeah. They're not going to have time to do that. They're not going to have time to yeah. do that. And when someone overdoses, they stop breathing and they'll die in a matter of minutes. Really? So they, really they have to have that dose Okay. With right them, away. which is why well, we encourage people to carry me. it. You've educated me yeah. quite well now. Okay. I thank, thank you. you. Madam Chair, okay. thank you. All right. No more questions? Okay. Thank you very much for your testimony. Thank you. And um, since, is there anyone else to testify on this bill? 
Okay, then this concludes the public hearing on Bill Number 180695. We'll now go into a public meeting to consider the action to be taken on this bill. Okay, and the chair recognizes Councilmember Bill Greenlee for a motion on Bill Number 180695. Thank you, Madam Chair. I move that Bill Number 180695 be reported as committee with favorable recommendation and the rules of council be suspended to allow for first reading at our next session of council. Second. It's been moved and properly seconded that Bill Number 180695 be reported from this committee with a favorable recommendation and further, further move that the rules of council be suspended to permit first reading at the, of this bill at the next session of council. All of those in favor of this motion will signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay. The ayes have it and the motion carries and bill number 180695 will be reported from this committee with a favorable recommendation with a request that the rules of council be suspended to permit first reading at the next session of council. This concludes the public health public meeting of the committee on public health and human services and there being no further business before the committee. Thank you very much for attending.